Uh, what they don't tell you at the boat show, part two. Uh, we're going to look at some critical aspects of a boat uh, that you may want to consider uh, when you're purchasing one or using one. Uh, the first uh, series of shots is the underbody of the Kashin 40. The Kashin 40 has what is known as a three quarters keel in that the keel runs three quarters the length of the bottom of the boat and this is good because it protects the rudders and it protects the props because the keel is below uh, the uh, the props and rudders so it will hit uh, an object the ground uh, first. Uh, this also helps in tracking or steering the boat. It helps maintain uh, your course and it also makes the boat highly maneuverable in close quarters. Okay, we're now going to enter uh, back into the cabin and we're going to evaluate the engine room. A lot of this they won't tell you at the boat show, but it's critically important, especially if you are going to be an owner-maintainer of the vessel, which most likely going to be the case in the boat of this vintage and, uh, and uh, price range. It's very important that you can move around the engine room with ease. So let's go there now. So in the engine room of the Kaohsiung, it's actually very easy to move around. The engine room is uh, the beam of the boat, the full beam, and it's very easy to check critical components. What are critical components that you want to do for light maintenance or everyday maintenance? The first is you want to be able to easily check the engine oil. So here I am uh, checking the engine oil on these twin Volvos. Uh, this is the uh, starboard engine. Next, you want to be able to check the coolant levels uh, easily. Uh, and you also want to be able to fill the oil easily uh, if you need to add any. You want to be able to change the air filter. That's that black box. In addition, you want to be able to do this easily on both sides. Uh, this is the, uh, the port engine. And these are set up in what is known as a counter-rotation. Here's the filter. Easy to remove. You also want to be able to check underneath the engine. You want to be able to check the belts and change the belts with no problem. And you can do that all on this vessel uh, and vessels of this class uh, without having to do Harry Houdini. If you have to do be Harry Houdini to be able to change fluids or change belts, it means you're never going to do it. It means that maintenance will suffer. In the background there, beneath, beneath those blue uh, crates are actually the battery boxes. Again, all you have to do is just lift up a panel and you have access. And that's inc inc critically important because you need to check the oil, uh, sorry, correction, the water in the batteries. This is the gen set or generator and this is easily accessible just by facing it. And you remove these panels to check the oil and the coolant, etc. So overall, the engine room in this uh, vessel, especially for a boat of 40 feet, is very easy to move around. Good job, Cushing. All right, let's move up into the cabin. One of my pet peeves on many vessels is that to give the illusion of maximum space, they minimize storage. But you actually need to maximize storage, otherwise everything's floating around the cabin, or when you're in a seaway, flying around the cabin. And you want to make sure that the storage is real storage. You want to look at the depth of the cabinets. You know, minimum of six inches, and then it needs to be the width to accommodate uh, you know, real life size objects. The same is true for the hanging lockers. If the clothes all have to be folded in there, it's not a hanging lo locker, it's a dresser. So these are important considerations. In vessels really in 35 foot range, they will really create an illusion of space by minimizing your storage. But then, as I said earlier, everything is going to be floating around the cabin. All right, let's move into one more area, and that's the electrical engineering. You want to make sure it's accessible, and you want to make sure that the vessel is wired well. Uh, in the case of the Kaohsiung, the electrical panel is behind uh, the helm, and this is a pretty standard configuration. We just open up this locker here, and we have full access uh, to the electrical panel. And what we'll see here uh, is, uh, I think, excellent wiring. Uh, the wiring is bundled. Uh, it's uh, heat shrink wrapped, so it's less uh, uh, susceptible to corrosion, and everything is labeled. Uh, another aspect of this, remember this is a 35-year-old boat, uh, this hasn't been monkeyed around with. Uh, it's pretty much the way it came from the factory with a few additions, and that's really what you want to see. You want to see neat, orderly wires. 
Because if it looks confusing to you, that means it is. And that means it's going to be difficult to fix when something goes wrong. And let's not forget, this is a boat, something always goes wrong. Alright, thanks for watching the video. The next time we're going to address maintenance items. And I think I need to service the aft head. Have a great day.